It would be great just to give him a nice welcome all the way from South Africa. Afternoon. Um, uh, it's really good to be um, here. And I know in two years back I was supposed to be here. And on my last day it was a problem with my visa and I could not make it. So for this time I was very uh, kind of looking forward and much more excited. And I think um, for me, it's, 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 it's a great feeling to, to come and, and talk about the story. Um, how probably from the presentation, I'll play a video of five minutes and then talk about in terms of what we do, uh, the exciting from the TBN and, and give us opportunity and the future growth around South Africa and, and, and other uh, SADC. So, um, Harrison, I'd love to, um, to play the video. Kailicha Township in Cape Town was born in 1983. It was launched as a new home concept for a rapidly growing influx of people from the Eastern Cape and to address overcrowding in other Cape Town townships. But in reality, it served as a hub to house cheap labor which could service Cape Town's industries. And it was never meant to develop as a town in its own right. Today, Kailicha is said to be the second largest and fastest growing township in South Africa, with around one and a half million residents, 75% of which are under the age of 35. Yet, over half of its people are unemployed, living below the poverty line, and more than a third have no easy access to water. Surveys show that their major concerns remain unemployment and the lack of skills training. In 2004, a high school teacher and a resident realized that a major life-changing enabler was lacking for all in Kailicha, and that was access to affordable technology. When I started the business, is it, I, I was selling the refurbished computers on the boot of the car. So going to every school, and uh, looking to do presentation to teachers. So I was focusing really on teachers. And in the beginning, there was kind of resistance and people would say that I'm stealing computer to other schools. And others were saying that I'm mad and I cannot sell, I mean, computers. But what I've realized that is to make sure that I group teachers in the saving, which is stock fair. So when they come together, six of them, they call it 400 a month. Within six months, all of them, they have computers. So that I use it, I mean, to different schools, and, and, and it works, I mean, on those schools. But as time goes on, I realized that teachers were having these computers and putting them in their house becomes an ornament or museum because I mean, they cannot use it, the computers. Hence, I, I realized that I need to have Internet Cafe with the partners. We said that we need to have the first Internet Cafe in Kairich so people can come and use the Internet. But we never realized that time that the Internet Cafe it's, it's the problem around ICT is a big problem, I mean, in, in our communities. So starting with Internet Cafe, people were not coming in the Internet Cafe. If they come, they come and ask us to do their, their CVs, and we find a local radio station, Radio Bonele, where we invite them to come, and we realize that they cannot differentiate between fax and image, and that we need to train them, we need to skill them. So we started uh, now the following year having a training where we train them around computer-use computers. That, that changed Silulo as, as a business. To meet high demand, Silulo Uluto Technologies quickly began rolling out more internet cafes, which also offer computer sales and maintenance services, and the company soon received immense local and global recognition. A renowned BBC World Services journalist once described Silulo's success as simply Internet by the people, for the people, that is both changing and saving lives. In 2007, the Silulo team also realized that many township people could not even afford a second-hand computer, let alone operate one. So they began offering basic computer training. Today, the company runs 16 centers offering a range of computer-related products and services around the Western Cape and has trained over 3,000 people. 
the training we provide, we provide introduction to computers. I mean, where we teach, I mean, intro to computer, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Microsoft Access, email, internet, social media. And most guys that goes out to the training, they could find employment. Probably 60% of them, they can able to work as, as a data capturers, call centers, retail, I mean, shops. 10% you find them studying their own businesses and, and others they want to study and further their studies I mean, with the different institutions. This year we started, we realized that we need also to have much more advanced courses where we train A+, N+, networking, programming, web development so that we could develop some much more skill that is needed by the market. So a part of the student that goes on that six months, they could become technician, they could become programmers, so that you could see the, the power of technologies in changing their lives. And the impact is, is, is kind of, people now, they feel empowered, they feel that they are part of the te technologies, they feel that they could do what they have with the skill and make sure that they improve their lives. For quite some time I've been hearing about Silulu on radio and I, I would see Silulu posters like at taxi ranks in our communities and I thought to myself, you know, let me call Silulu and find out for myself their terms and where I can, where I can start doing this course that I want to do. It's important to, to, to know computers because everything that we do around, it involves technology. Everything that we do, it's computer. So it's very important for you to understand and to well know the computer because if you don't know how to use computer then it means that you have a missing point. Thank you. Um, the reason why I was playing the, the, the video, it, it was more just to give you the um, perspective. This video, we've done it in 2011. There are many changes in terms of the numbers and the, 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 the student that we have, we have, we have trained. And literally, I started this Silulu in the boot of uh, Cosa light um, where I used to go physically and, and put computers in the, the tables at schools and uh, say that it's a keyboard, it's a mouse, it's a monitor. Um, you buy this computer at 2.4. Uh, schools were starting asking me, I mean, you were a teacher, why now selling computers? You are not, you are, you're not okay. You can't sell a second-hand computer. And others were saying that, no, no, you, you, you are a thief. You are stealing computers to the school because there's no relationship between you and, and computers. Even my body was very tiny with a big eyes and big teeth. So no one take me serious. Like, no, no, you know, no. So, so there were much more resistance in, in, in the beginning. I think what works very well is to form a stock fell. We call it savings, where teachers group in six, and six months' time, they will contribute 400. So every month, I would deliver computers to the teachers. And, but that, it makes teachers buying these computers and they can't use them because they're not skilled enough. I mean, they don't have skill to use computers. So hence, I was thinking of Internet Cafe. So in, in 2004, it was started in Gusilulo. And 2006, started with the first Internet Cafe where we opened in Kailicha. We went to a supplier and asked us to loan 10 computers. We put the tables and the chairs. Uh, people were, were not coming and it was like, kind of ter ter terrible in the beginning around the 2006, 2007. Once we realized people, they can't use Internet Cafe, we started training, and then we, training, it's, I changed the businesses. Very interesting, in 2008, because we only have two centers, the training center and then the Internet Cafe, and then we needed money to expand, and there was no way that we could get the money in the bank because our trade rating were blacklisted. So no bank was like willing to loan us money. So we met firstly or Ralph, they were coming to see a Kylie, I mean they were coming to Kylie and then he see what we're doing. Uh, but there was nothing that happens on, on that TBN trip. And then I think after three months we met uh, Dr. Kim. Uh, he was in South Africa and we introduced by Colin. And the good thing that we even today, it amazed us. I mean, it was like a meeting that we tell you this is what we wanted to do. And he believed in us. And he said, I'm willing to... Because then we wanted to have a big IT center where 200 computers, people are going to come for 24 hours. And he advised us that that is not going to work. 
why not opening some internet cafes? And they said, okay, so that I'm willing to fund those three centers. So he came back and then with the TBC, and I think that for us, it was a start of us being a position that became taken serious by many uh, businesses. Because with that funding that we have to fund to us, I don't think so we'll be sitting here. And I think we'll be growing smaller, smaller scale. So that, that part of uh, funding it allows us to, to, to grow. Um, we're currently now employing 120 people working for us on a full-time basis. What we do, um, there are four things that we do. It's an internet cafe. It's not a typical internet cafe that we do. It's more we add other services. A day we see in one center 200, 500 people are coming in for different reasons. Others, they will come from mobile, for work, for their assignment, their work. So they're coming from, from a different reason. So this internet cafe is more where we assist people. And then, two, we have the training, where we train in the six months. Currently now, we train 1,500 students are coming every day. So we have trained about 20,000 students on end user. And those students, they able to get employment in call centers, retail stores, data capturers, city of Cape Town. So they get employment. And others, they will study further, find employment. And we also sell, even today, the hardware, computers, uh, refurbished, brand new one, and accessories. And we do IT support, supporting small businesses in the area. We have the 18 centers in the Western Cape. All of the centers are in the township. We don't have any center in town at the moment. They are in Kailicha, Kuguletu, Nyanga. We, in 2012, we expanded to Eastern Cape. We opened in Queenstown, East London, and, and Grahamstown. And Eastern Cape, very surprising thing that we've done. In the Western Cape, 70% school leavers, grade 12, looking for computer skill so they can find employment. In the Eastern Cape, 70% professionals, teachers, nurses, and small businesses that are looking for just to get a skill of computers so that they could do their job much more better. So this is what we, we currently have about 26 centers that we, we have. And the f expansion for this year will be opening one store in Cape Town City Center where we'll able to train people are working in small businesses, NGOs and, and companies in the call centers. And we're also having a presence in the Free State and KwaZulu Natal. And definitely, we'll have a center in, in Port Elizabeth, King Linstown, Ophimvaba. So the Eastern Cape, it's where the growth for us uh, for, to expand. And the future for us, we want to make sure that every South African township, we have Silulo. Not only township, in the village, in the rural areas, where it becomes a problematic for, for, for people to get to access to Silulona. And two, the drive is on franchise. Because we're realizing that we started to, after 2026 20, centers, five of those centers are we given to our staff. So five of our staff are, are, are owning part of the franchise that we have. So we see for us to grow to have 300 stores in South Africa, even in, in Southern Africa, we need to empower other entrepreneurs. And other entrepreneurs can learn from, from us. And we also offer other services. There are two services that we're also realizing that we have to do more. Currently, we're training technical skills, computers, um, technical. So there's a missing thing that we, we, we're looking so much to train. It's training about soft skill, etiquette, work readiness program, because it's something that is kind of big uh, for us to allow many young people to come and able to train. And the second thing, it's adding the um, recruitment and placement to find employment so these young people can get an employment. Um, also, we, there's a big drive to move in the mobile space, not only selling the hardware for mobile space. There's so much need from the support. I mean, how do you set the WhatsApp how do you make sure that you have a BBM, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, using your phone? Because people are coming every day, having their devices, and they can't able to use it. So we see it as a great opportunity for us to get from, 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 from the mobile. And I think, um, there's, I think we, we, we see in terms of 
from a TBN point of view, as you have assisted us, we only don't see ourselves only as a success. We hoping and we working very hard to make sure that there will be many silly laws that will come from us. And I think we'll do it through this business that already proven. And I, and I think the interest is make sure that not only South Africa, um, Lesotho, Swaziland, Zimbabwe, we have the, the presence. Thank you. Yeah.